This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. We are talking Alec Murdoch right now with Eric Faddis. He's a trial lawyer, civil and criminal litigator, and former felony prosecutor. And when it comes to Alec Murdoch, well, there's a lot of roads uh, we can go down. But right now, we've uh, seen uh, more love letters come in, which will probably go on indefinitely. We saw a shirtless Alec Murdoch looking very comfortable uh, in his cell. We've heard a phone call that wasn't that uh, old. Him talking with Buster seems very comfortable, very much uh, business as usual. Uh, I was kind of surprised by just how, uh, I, I guess, un uh, ruffled he he seems to be in prison. He seems to be just very much him from what we've seen and heard before, kind of calm, kind of uh, in his own world. Uh, are you at all surprised by this, uh, uh, what we've witnessed with him in prison thus far? You know, it, it is surprising and, and uh, in some senses, in some senses, it's not. You know, mm-hmm. from, from what I've seen, I covered this case for Court TV. Yeah. Uh, you know, Alex Murdoch, uh, it kind of lives in his own little world. Uh, and, and he's, you know, convinced himself that he is righteous and he has done no wrong. And, and he's sort of in this own little bubble yeah. that he has. And I just wonder if he's, you know, still potentially in denial about the fact that he's going to spend the rest of his days in prison. He's, his fortune is is either gone or is going to be gone. Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably not making too many friends in there. And I'm just wondering if this is sort of some – uh, you know, protective bubble that he's placed around himself, and and if reality is going to set in at some point, and and uh, you know things will be a lot less uh, charming for him in 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 custody. You know, another argument that I heard uh, earlier, I was uh, talking with a former FBI uh, agent uh, about uh, this, Robin Drake, and he had an interesting perspective on it, saying maybe he's at peace, maybe now that he's he's in jail, he really can't inflict the damage that he'd been doing compulsively for all those years. And now he's been caught. He's there. I wonder if there's some level of, uh, you know, just uh, uh, there's nothing more I can do. I'm done. And and here I am. And maybe this has found himself peace uh, and the demons that plagued the way that he was acting. Uh, certainly they can be there, but the, uh, the way that they can inflict damage on others much more limited now. Oh, yeah. You know, I think that's a fascinating take. Um, You know, if we look at his life leading up to these incidents, uh, he had this alleged, you know, vicious drug addiction. He's stealing millions and millions from his own clients. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and, and, um, the walls are beginning to kind of close in there. There are investigations taking place. um, and, And then, of course, um, with uh, the murder of his family, of, of which he was convicted, um, you know, things were getting horribly bad. Yeah. Maybe he is maybe he is now in a place where he says, gosh, at least all of that nightmare is behind me. And I can sit in here and you know, read my love letters from fans and take selfies. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really do wonder that. What's your take on the settlement uh, that went to the Beach family? Number one, I want to say I'm happy they did get a settlement. They certainly deserved uh, something for the, the tragic the death of their daughter and the hell that they've been going through. But I, I do at the same point feel like this, I don't know how much justice was, was done or, or maybe the, the right party is paying uh, for what, what the son Paul actually did. Because when you look at the Parker's convenience store now paying between 50 to 15 to $20 million to the beach family, uh, for the wrongful death and for them selling alcohol to a minor, they really didn't do anything wrong in terms of process and knowledge that they had of selling alcohol to a minor. They didn't know they were selling alcohol to a minor. Paul came in there with his brother's ID. They look very much alike. Uh, they're very well known in the community as well. Uh, but if you look at the ID, that's your job. It says he's of age. He's buying the alcohol. There's not a lot more a store can do to ask someone to prove their age other than just refuse the sale altogether. Uh, Is it right that almost 100 percent of this judgment is coming straight from Parker's and, and really, you know, Murdoch's running low on what he can do? Yeah, you know, there, there are really some practical considerations at play here in this one. Uh, you know, we, we do wrongful death cases at, at my firm in Colorado, and, yeah. and so we're no stranger to this kind of thing. 
Um, you, you know, uh, it, what it looked like is, is they could have gone after the Murdaws. Of course, um, you know, Paul Murdaugh was seems to be primarily responsible for for this horrible tragedy. But uh, it, it it sounds like it. The Murdoch's may be not collectible yeah. in this circumstance. They've, they've got, you know, their, their fortune is dwindling. They've got all these other people who want uh, pieces of that. And so I, I get why the plaintiff instead went after the company that has apparently deeper pockets to mm-hmm. the tune of 15 to 20 million dollars. But I hear you, you know, uh, was the was the um, convenience store the, the primary bad actor? No, absolutely not. But did they have a responsibility and did they have a causal role in how all this played out? Played out? I think they absolutely did. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I'm happy that the victim's family received a substantial sum of money. That's, mm-hmm. a, that's a pretty large settlement, even for a wrongful death. Yeah. Um, but yeah, does it feel like justice was served completely? No, yeah. not to me. Well, I guess the question would be what more, I mean, if you're Parker's and, and I know it's in their insurance companies, they're the one who said, we're not going to go to court and be connected to Alec Murdoch. Let's settle this. Uh, it, optics of it, I think, I mean, if it wasn't Alec Murdoch, I could see them actually going to court and probably winning. Uh, but it, because it was connected to Murdoch, uh, not so much. Uh, what, what, yeah. you know, if you're being told this, that you did something wrong and you owe this money, what did they do wrong? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty darn expensive oops. Yeah, like, right? Well, it's, well, it's, well, it, and it, it, well, what do they do? Okay. We did this wrong. How do we do this better other than checking IDs, which is what yeah, they did. You know, I mean, like what, what uh, more know, do you want us to do? <laughs> sure. No, no. I, I understand that argument. You know, there, there are some. Um, places that that can scan IDs to mm-hmm. determine if the ID is valid, but some of these fake IDs will scan and come well, up as valid. Well, and it was so a real ID. It was his brother's ID, so it was a valid twenty-one-year-old ID. So it, that that wasn't even right. the thing where they got a fake ID and, and missed it. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> what more could they have done? I, I, I'm not entirely certain. One thing that that, that appeared to, to me, at least in my review of, of of some of the video, is that Paul Murdoch looked pretty schmammered. Yeah. And 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 I think a part of the case was that they still served him or gave him alcohol anyway. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's a piece of it. They could have done a better assessment as to whether the individual requesting alcohol should be given alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I hear you. Uh, it's it's a a little bit difficult in terms of what else they could have done to prevent this. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi.